Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. It's pretty rare that I listen to a band for the first time and think, dang, that didn't go as well as I'd hoped. And I feel like my first reaction and analysis to Ghost wasn't great. I missed an important lyric reference. I missed that Papa was wearing a mask. And I'm told that it just didn't showcase the extent of what Tobias Forge is able to do. So I'm following your suggestion. And we're going to listen to your most requested song by Ghost called Ceres. Hopefully I'll do a better job this time. Let's get to it. Oh. Whoa, this opening riff is so chromatic and has so much dissonance in it. It's spooky. Like it feels so daring and it's metal while also feeling like it's like coming from a horror film somehow. <laughs> so dissonant. At least it's coming back to the same route time and time again. Yikes. Hurry up, Terry. We're going to be late. <laughs> Whoa. There are some really awesome uh, additional harmonies and they're really counter melodies. The more I hear that riff, the more it starts to feel normal. And that is one way you can make something that feels super dissonant at first uh, become more catchy. If you just do it over and over and over, that initial shock of dissonance can wear off on us. It is fascinating how they are reinforcing this in so many places. They'll drop it down, really gives them extra oomph underneath. Also, that counter melody really worked with it as well. This is, oh. Ah, it's bold. Cool strings too. That counter melody. I like that. This almost feels like a different band to me. Yeah, there's the same look uh, overall. I think this is an earlier version of some of the costumes and characters, but uh, it's so interesting. It feels really dark, like really, I guess gothic is the right word for it. Uh, in Mary on the Cross, it felt tongue in cheek. Like it, it had a lot of sort of sarcasm and humor. This one feels like we have impending doom about to happen. There is some brightness in the sound, but mostly I'm just feeling this like thud in the lower register. <sighs> oh, gosh. It's, 
interesting to hear his voice against this music because I feel that there's so much smoothness in it. Sometimes with stuff that is this, uh, this dark and has this kind of edge to it, I would expect there to be more edge in the voice. Instead, we get this smooth sound, also really lovely uh, layers in the voice as well. And it almost, it harkens back to typo negative for me a little bit, but definitely has a uh, very fresh high top that's available up there. It's a, uh, yeah, it's an interesting combination. It's so easy when he goes up. Can you hear the rumble? Let's call it. Ugh. No wonder it feels so rumbly. Did you check out the size of that drum? It's like a huge timpani or bass drum, I think. I know you're That's awesome. I don't know if I've seen that used in metal. That's awesome. I know your soul is not tainted. I've, can you hear the rumble? Can you feel the rumble? I, I feel like that rumble is our uh, our bass drum that is just, it, this whole song actually, it feels like there's an impeding rumble or impending rumble. I really, really like the way the lyrics are. Uh, also going back to some of those ideas in the music. Ah, oh, this is, this is like super delightful right now. Thank you for all of you uh, suggesting this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, I feel like he's perfectly captured hypnotizing both in the video, but also vocally the way it becomes tender yet at, it's, it's so clear. The words are so clear and the way that he keeps making this leap that I would think he probably is disguising how difficult that is to go up there. It's not easy to leap in that part of the voice for most people. Some voices have an easier time than others, but it's just so smooth. <sighs> He has so much facility in what kind of tone quality he wants to bring in this area of his voice. Right? There are ways you can compress and have less air coming through, or you can add more air, maybe for a little more tenderness, a feeling of uh, perhaps being a little bit closer when you have that airiness. Can you hear the rumble that's calling? I can feel the thunder that's breaking. I can see through the scars inside you. I can feel the thunder that's breaking in your heart. We're gonna go back one more time. I the more I listen to the details, the more exciting I'm getting. Or excited I'm getting. See where it's hard. <laughs> and that's because he's so specific about where he does these little slides or not. Sometimes it's totally clean going from one pitch to another and sometimes there are these little slides and he, it's just like, it feels like he's almost like worming into her brain here. I can feel the thunder that's breaking in your heart I can see through the scars 
Bedside smile? <laughs> oh my gosh. Shoot. Nice size. Oh my gosh, this beat and the thunk, the thud, the all of the way that it's just making me want to like have some sort of motion. I guess that's where headbanging originates from. Oh my gosh, I feel like I need to just let loose. I I imagine in audiences, live audiences of this, hair would be flying everywhere neck braces would be sold on the side you know just so you can keep on going <sighs> gosh it's a good beat <laughs> oh my gosh a candle casting a That feels so creepy somehow. And I read through the lyrics of this and I read also that there are moments of this that were calling back, was it I think to Silence of the Lambs, especially to the character Clarice. This is Ceres, which Ceres can refer to a church. It's really interesting. They have stuff that can, can potentially be religious in their lyrics, but then they go a totally different route, which is very interesting and intriguing. But Clarice and Ceres are very, very similar in the sound. And I feel like this is that moment when Clarice is being manipulated, right? Uh, well, I guess that's a lot of the video, but it's, uh, it gets into this really, really creepy part, like he's whispering about fava beans or something. I can hear the thunder Wow, the dynamic control is great. Me? And the way he adds a little bit of distortion right there tells me it's always available in his voice, but he's been choosing to sing it with a lot of cleanliness this whole time. You see that you're lost. <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> I'm starting to feel more and more lost within different instruments in this whole song. The way they've brought forward one instrument and then pulled it back and then a different one comes forward. It just feels like, like we're sort of being consumed into the song. <laughs> The 
this is really interesting in the music video. I feel like they're making a call to like almost revivals in church with the audience. This is a school talent show, right? But something about some of the movements in the audience, it that's maybe taken from that idea of an old church and like the spirit uh, possessing people essentially. Very, very interesting. There's so much duality in what they do. It's uh, fascinating. Oh. oh, yeah, there we go. Can't you see that you're lost without me? Wow. The push and pull in here is so great. I love the way they keep bringing back that crazy beat, the deep, deep one. Uh, but then there are moments, they're constantly taking it away from us too. So every time it comes back, I'm like, oh yeah, I want to be, I want to be headbanging along with everybody else in the, the mosh pit right now. <laughs> it looks like he's casting a spell. Can't you see that you lost Wow, it's like, it's like he took over this girl. Like he's controlling, like almost like puppeting her somehow. Or, oh, that, like, wow. Um, I feel this is very much hearkening back to, or forward to Stranger Things, right? She's, this very much feels like Elle has entered the scene but maybe it's a slightly evil L or one that's being manipulated ultimately, right? Huh. She's like an actress. Think about the lyrics over and over and the way they also like loop so much. It does have a sensation of just, you feel seen somehow, right? I can feel the thunder that's breaking in your heart. They're, they are intimate lyrics. It almost feels like a love song to someone. Uh, and when you see a person like that or you feel seen, it opens you up. And, uh, and it can establish a kind of connection. And it's just, it's crazy to me how once that's established in the music video, it, it feels like it's twisted. If I were to just read the lyrics on their own, it doesn't feel twisted like it does when I see it in the music video. Huh. <laughs> Whoa, I, 
I wasn't ready for that to end. I guess, does that mean I was caught in that spell too? One more time. I can see through the stars inside you. Oh, what a terrible sound. <laughs> wow. Yeah, woo! <laughs> this song is hypnotizing. I feel like it would be so easy to just become obsessed with it because you feel like he's somehow just speaking, singing directly to you, but then you have this sort of swirling of the instruments and tons of dissonance that somehow begins to sound sweeter as the song goes on. And it's just, it's a whole spell. Whoa. I I feel like it really broke me out of the spell at the end when they pulled the plug on it. And I, I realized how much I wanted to just keep going and going and going. And if you want to hear more hypnotizing music, I'll put up a playlist over here. Wow. Thank you so much for this recommendation. May you fall more in love with music every day.